In the previous video in this series, we laid the groundwork for the Minimum Inputs Challenge and tackled Stereo Madness in this way. Today, we're going to tackle back on track and see how I'll be interacting with the introduction of yellow jump pads. My name is Unknown680, and in today's video, we'll see just how extreme of a demon this challenge can possibly make it. Our first input in Back on Track doesn't actually occur until after the first yellow jump pad. Simply begin your input about a block to the left of this double spike and continue holding down to clear another double spike and ascend the pillar staircase. You'll need to release this input here and allow yourself to bounce off the second yellow jump pad. Begin your next input so that you jump off this one block platform as early as possible. You can continue holding until you reach the top of the next pillar staircase. Once you land back on solid ground, you'll need to begin your next input just before this next double spike. Hold so that you jump twice over both sets of spikes, but release so that you don't collide with those pesky, input-ending, mid-air obstacles. With this next input, start it before the spike and hold it. With this input, you'll be able to clear all three iconic, yet lethal, yellow jump pads and an additional spike before it gets put to an end by another mid-air obstacle. You can use one input to jump twice over this obstacle until just before yet another mid-air obstacle. My goodness, these are no fun. After you pass that obstacle, hopefully having only five inputs, let your icon bounce on the yellow jump pad and simply tap once until you reach the final block on this platform, as holding will cause you to crash into the upcoming spike. Once you reach the next elevated platform containing the spike, you'll want to get close to the spike and begin your next input here. This is because jumping late enough will allow you to gain enough distance to bounce off this jump pad. Otherwise, you'd fall short of the pad upon landing, jump over it, and crash into the spike floor below. Keep holding as you bounce off the jump pad as you ascend these platforms and release when you reach the top. Allow yourself to fall until the lowest platform and hold so that you jump twice. This is in an effort to avoid another mid-air spike. Anyways, because of that, you need to let yourself descend the platforms and begin an input as you approach the next spike, which you can hold until you land on the jump pad. This pad will carry you to a pillar, but you can't continue holding as icons can't gain enough distance to land on the next pillar of the same height. Instead, you'll want to land on the block below and start your input at that point. You can thankfully hold this input for quite some time, as you can ascend two additional pillars in this way. Oh, what a surprise! There comes another mid-air obstacle, forcing you to end your input here, drop down to a lower platform, and have to begin an additional input as you approach the end of it. Thankfully, you can hold here for quite some time, overcoming multiple spikes and ascending platforms like so. Release at this point so that you land on the jump pad and begin another input once you're in the air. This allows you to navigate this descending set of blocks and land on a lower platform safely. Next, when you approach the spike on this platform, begin another input. This will allow you to continuously jump along with the platforms until you reach a pillar containing a jump pad. As an aside, you can also go for the coin route if you so choose, as you simply release your input earlier and end up back at the same point, keeping the input number the same. Once you land on solid ground, use another input to jump over both sets of double spikes. What awaits us next is our first precise timing of the level. This one will be interesting to say the least. To put it simply, a different sequence of jumps occurs depending on when you jump off solid ground. You'll want to begin your input at such a time so that your icon lands in the middle of this pillar before you jump again, with your goal being to make your icon bounce off the jump pad in the middle rather than on its left side. If you do bounce on the left side, you won't have the optimized positioning, causing you to undershoot a platform. The correct timing allows you to gain the distance you'll need to make it into the ship section. Now, there's nothing in particular to note in this section that I haven't mentioned already in the previous video covering Stereo Madness. Just simply grind along the ceiling and floor when appropriate, and you'll be just fine. Hopefully, you'll find this section pretty self-explanatory as shown by the coin paths provided. After experimenting with holding the ship heading into the icon section, I found that you couldn't progress any further. So that's why I entered the icon section without holding an input, just in case you were wondering. 
When you land back on solid ground after transforming into the icon, you'll want to begin an input close to this double spike and hold it as you ascend these platforms. Allow yourself to drop one block once you reach the top. Tap once here as you'll need to land on this yellow jump pad in order to proceed. Get ready! Up next comes another precise timing. You'll need to jump at just the right time at the marker indicated. If you jump too early, you'll actually land just outside of the hitbox of the jump pad and perform a normal jump into this wall. If you jump late, you'll overshoot the second slab platform and fall into the spike pit below. If timed right, you can hold your input along these two jump pads in order to perform two additional jumps. When you release and fall onto the next jump pad at this point, you should have 22 inputs. You'll then approach three sets of column blocks, all of which you'll need to simply tap as attempting to jump and hold at the right time sadly provides no benefit. After all, another precise timing awaits you just ahead, so you'll have to be prepared for it of course. Here, you'll need to begin your next input exactly half a block away from this spike, with your goal being to gain enough distance so that you can jump in between this ceiling spike and this floor spike. Starting it too late won't allow you to clear the first spike, or you could jump into the spike pit. Starting it even slightly early though causes you to crash into the ceiling spike. Inputting at just the right time allows you to jump over a series of spikes, ascend quite a few platforms, and just barely pass the ceiling spike. Start your next input when your icon reaches the final block on this platform. This allows you to continuously jump as you descend over four spikes back onto solid ground. From here, you'll need to use two inputs in order to jump over the spikes and dodge the ceiling spikes. Be sure to align your inputs in such a way that you can land on this two block high pillar. Drop down from this pillar and begin your next input as close as you can to the next pillar. This allows you to drop down so that you can jump off the pillar on the right side, evade the ceiling spike, jump off the floor once more and land on top of this two block high pillar. Release once you land here and allow yourself to drop one block. From here, it's smooth sailing to the end of the level, with two additional inputs required to jump across these platforms. It's pretty self-explanatory. This brings our input total to 33 in Back on Track. In summary, I can safely say that the minimum input challenge does not turn Back on Track into the extreme demon that the GD meme culture loves to make it out to be. This level is definitely quite easier to complete compared to Stereo Madness. The reason why this level is so much easier is that we're much more limited with the space we can work with. Thanks to all of these mid-air obstacles! This comes at the price of increasing the number of inputs required to beat the level. Obviously, our space which we're allowed to work with will only become more restrictive from here on out, so it's inevitable that the individual input counters in each level will only increase from here. Hopefully though, it won't be by too much, and that we can optimize the space and resources we're given to help keep that number as low as possible. Adding this level's total to our total of 24 inputs in Stereo Madness, our newly improvised global input counter is now at 57. From here on out, we'll be adding each input total to this global input counter to keep all of you updated as to how many inputs we currently have. Now that we have this series underway, complete with a global input counter, I'd like to encourage all of you to guess how many inputs are required to complete Geometry Dash. Personally, I'm going to be optimistic, as I usually am, if you know me by now, and say with confidence that we can keep this number below 2,000 maybe even below 1,900 as well. Let me know your guesses in the comments below. On an unrelated note, regarding live streams, I'd just like to let you all know that I will be streaming over on Twitch a lot more often from here on out. There, I hope to stream the verifications of each level in the minimum input series so that they are ready to release when these videos come out. Whenever they do, of course. And obviously, in addition to that, I'll be streaming a whole bunch of other content as well. Who knows what I might be streaming in the future. Dare I say, it's the unknown that you should get excited for. Okay, okay, I'll stop, I'm sorry. Anyways, I'm sure many of you have heard about GD Twitch's revival recently, and I'd like to positively contribute to its success as much as I possibly can. The community and interactions I've had watching various streamers there are some of the greatest I've ever had in a long time. Not to mention all of the amazing features that Twitch has to offer. I look forward to seeing many of you there.
I love each and every one of you so much, and I want you to know that you are loved and that you matter. And with that, thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I'll see all of you on stream or in the next video. Peace out.